FDA 2024 Bob's Car Guy here in lovely Las Vegas. And I got to tell you, the weather is phenomenal. I'm sitting here under a gazebo in the courtyard by Marriott, and I got a little ceiling fan going on. I got the lights going on. I got everything going on. Smoking this Custa Rey. No, what is that? The Angel Cuesta from J.C. Newman that we just picked up at the media party, man, and I'm going to tell you about that, but I'm going to tell you about some other things. Now, I know you're noticing that I'm by myself. Where the heck is Mac Bergson? I don't know. Mac Bergson is a man about town, and he's probably out there riding roller coasters or, or putting it all on the big slots. I don't know, but I bet he's going to trip in after a little while because, you know, Mac ain't ever going to let us down. But this is this is a, this is a day. This is the first day of PCA. By the way, this is brought to you by our friends at Villager. If you don't have a cigar to smoke, grab you a Villager and light one up. And if you do have a cigar to smoke, I hope it's a Villager because the flavors are gonna never let you down. That's for sure. Now I gotta tell you, I'm gonna be honest and transparent. Sponsored by Villager. I like Villager. I like their story and. Their flavors, I've only had a half a dozen of their blends, but there is a common thread in each and every blend. I know you're saying it's flavor. Well, no, it's not because different cigars have different flavors and it's it's blended in a different way, which is really, really enjoyable. But the burn, the construction, the draw is always impeccable. I have yet to have an issue with any of those cigars from Villager. I am looking forward to seeing what's going on with them tomorrow at PCA. Now, today, we started PCA, right? Last night was our beta test, and boy, howdy, we had some things we had to work on. I couldn't get on YouTube. I couldn't do this. I couldn't do that. It was sideways. The audio was wrong. The lighting was wrong, which is crazy. So we did that yesterday just to kind of get us dialed in so that we could be successful today right and so hopefully we'll be successful i'll never look good but hopefully i'll be good my content will be something that you'll be interested in i hope so and mac will be here soon 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 because i need my mac bergson so today was the first day of pca pca runs friday saturday sunday monday now first thing you're probably going to ask is i want to go to pca well, PCA is meant for the retailers and the manufacturers to get together and do what they call write paper. I'm going to teach you the lingo, right? Writing paper. What writing paper means is these, these retailers are going to come and sit down with their reps and they're going to get awesome PCA deals and they're going to buy maybe their allocation for six months, maybe their allocation for a year of all their cigars from these manufacturers. They get to go to manufacturer, to manufacturer, to manufacturer. They get to see the reps. They get to get the great deals. They get to see the, the owners and the master blenders, and they just get to have a great time in Vegas. And so they're going to come here, and they're going to write all this paper, which means they're going to place their orders and get things done. So if you're not a retailer, no, I'm not a retailer. If you're not a cigar manufacturer, and, and no, I am not a cigar manufacturer, but there's a caveat. If you're media, you get a chance to come out here. Now, I know what most people may say is the only reason media goes is because they want to get free cigars. Absolutely right. No. Now, we do get cigars. We do. Um, we don't get usually any more cigars than any of the other people that, um, that go to the events. And... We can't go up. It's actually in the rules. We can't go up and ask a manufacturer, hey, I'm a cigar hooky do media guy. I'm an influencer. Give me some cigars. You can't even go up and ask them for things like that. And I think that's great. I really do. Now, we have interviews on top of interviews on top of interviews. And so in those interviews, we're going to sit down and they're going to hand us a pack of cigars. They may hand us, they'll hand me a cigar to smoke. Usually they'll hand Chief a cigar to smoke behind the scenes behind the camera and and that'll be something that we're doing while we're doing the interview because if i'm sitting there interviewing somebody and i'm not smoking their cigar or even worse i'm smoking somebody else's cigar it just doesn't look good so it's great for me that i get to smoke those cigars so why is pca important to you why should you watch this video well it's because i'm lovely no i got a face for radio but here's the thing the new releases come out usually at pca 
the new information comes out. By the way, if you want to find out the new releases and new information, you want to find all the press releases, you go to ShoeBetterReport.com, and you can get all those releases. Cheat does a great job putting that stuff up, and you get to know what's going on. Why do you need to know that? Because your local tobacconist is there to make money. Yes, they're there to smoke cigars. They're there to have a great time with you because you're awesome. But they want to feed their family. And so they want to purchase cigars that you would purchase. Because if they purchase cigars nobody wants to buy, they're not doing anything but just stocking the humidor. And that's no good. I got to keep it fired up. So what is it? What's in it for you? Well, when you go to ShavettaReport.com or other media outlets... Um, secondary outlets, I would say. I'm a little biased. But if you go to other media outlets or, or ShabettaReport.com, you can find out what's coming. And you can tell your your local um, tobacconist at your local shop and say, hey, I'm really interested in this new cigar. I'm really interested in getting a hold of this cigar, that cigar, the other. And when they go and place their orders, they've got that in the front of their mind, and they're going to order those cigars probably. Now, if you really, really want a cigar, really, really want to start. Like, let's say Artisano Del Tobacco El Pupo. Pupo means octopus, right? If you want to get one of those, which I highly recommend you do, it's delicious and wonderful, you tell the guy, and he may not want to pull a trigger on it because you're just one person wanting to buy it. But you say, I'll tell you what, it's a box of 10. I'll buy five out of that box. I bet you, I bet you that your shop will buy that box of cigars. Why? Because most most shops, I'm going I'm to I'm spill the tea. Most shops run off what's called Keystone, which means if they buy a box of cigars for fifty dollars, they're going to sell the box for a hundred dollars. They're going to double their money, right? And so if you tell them, "Hey, I'll buy half a box, box of ten. I'll buy five. You buy those five. You basically pay for that box. And if he doesn't sell it well, it's unfortunate that he didn't make any money and he's lost a waste on that shelf space. But He's not losing any money because those cigars are already sold, right? I'm trying to get you in a better place in your life by getting great cigars. So let's get to PCA. Let me get a puff. Hang on. Come on. Did I mention that this is sponsored by Villiger? Our friends at Villiger. That's right. Villiger Cigars. They are not new on the scene they've been around for a very long time they're really dipping in heavy into the into the the premium market and in doing that they've got lots of blends the miami is one that i'm thinking of right now that you can really get a hold to and enjoy i really think a villager can be something you'd like to get so get you one try you one back to the show all right so no sleep and smoking 15 cigars in a day and a half will get you talking fast and Diet Pepsi and in and out hamburger. So today was the first day. Like I said, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. It's four days. So, and Monday's a half a day. So Friday, you go in, you get your registration, you get your pretty badge, right? I have a badge. I have I have sleeves. I just, I just, I'll tell you about where I went to later, but I had to dress up to go to where I went to. And I came back late, and so I had to throw on my, I had to pull off that stuff, throw on something, right, with the Bob Cigar Guy logo on. I got to brand myself. And I forgot that I'm supposed to have a T-shirt under this where my sleeves were showing. So, please, I apologize for the red neckiness, but that's just, it's real. So, Angel Quest. I usually don't like, I'm sorry, I'm going to go sideways on this. I usually don't grab a cigar that's got so many bands on it. I don't because I wonder what they're hiding behind the bands. Now, I know that, and I talk about this, you see with your eyes first and you purchase with your eyes first. And so this is bright. This will get your attention. This will say, hey, look at me. And I get it. But I just tend to, to, not, um, to not purchase those. And this is a double perfecta had the tip on the top and it came down to a tiny, tiny point. I actually cut the point off a little bit because I have a hard time lighting it. I do, I do. So I cut a little bit so I could have a good even burn. So. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, right? 
today, Friday, at 10 o'clock, we were able to show up and register. Registration was fast, lightning fast. You went in there, you got your badge with me and Chief. We went up there and we told them we were media. They did our credentials. You have to be credentialed. They did our credentials and they put a little media thing on there, which lets people know because it'll say either media, it will say uh, menu manufacturer it'll say somebody's working a booth and it'll say retailer so then when a salesman comes up to you they know who they're talking to because they're here to write paper that's the truth so 10 o'clock we get in line 10 10 we are through the line have our badges and we are now going in because we're media we got to go on to the um, floor where all the booths are, right? Convention floor. And I gotta tell you, it was amazing because there were so many people working, trying to get these things built. Everything was halfway built. Crates were everywhere, forklifts were running around. We were dodging stuff. There was stuff everywhere, tons and tons of people. Nobody was smiling. They were all working and driven and dedicated and focused. They were wide open, that's for sure. Stopped at Aganorson and talked to Fabian for a minute. Stopped at, um, uh, where else did we go? Uh, Dunbar and Tobacco Trust. We saw Cindy and Yvonne. Uh, we saw uh, Chris and his sweetie, um, Chris Duquesne and his sweetie. Um, talked to them for a little bit. Gave some hugs, some talking. We stopped at the foundation booth, which was pretty much done because the foundation booth for this year is pretty much the same as last year. So they've got everything lined up. Um, so we chatted with them a little bit and then we saw a couple other people uh Juan cancel from protocol cigars i saw him uh there's the first lady what's she saying i want to see btcgs what that ain't the first lady she ain't saying she won't see my booty she crazy she all right I got to go out there and see that. And they have these ashtrays. They have a row of ashtrays right before you get into the convention center. And they're about yay big, big as a turkey platter, and as deep as a gallon of milk, all right? And there's a line of them. And I took a picture going down that line because they're all perfectly empty. Now, when you leave the convention center, you can't be smoking cigars. You can't go out in different areas and see that. So, People will put their cigars in the ashtray, and it's my hope that I can take a picture of it to, to show you <coughs> excuse me, what it looks like, <coughs> because it will be mounded over. This thing <coughs> will hold a five-gallon bucket of cigar, and then it'll mound over for another, <coughs> excuse me, two or three gallons of, of cigar. And these cigars will be three quarters still there quarter smoke it's crazy but people get so many cigars they just smoke it and they don't like it and they put it out and there is I, I sit there i'm gonna be honest with you i sit there and i say that's a 30 dollar cigar that's a 45 dollar cigar that's man i just i just want to take that cigar and try and cut the end off of it put it in my pipe and smoke it crazy But hopefully I have some pictures for the time. I'm going to post up some pictures um, in the video showing the before and the after um, of all that stuff. So the the floor is not open. And here he is, Mr. Mac Bergson, my man right here. Hey, man. Let's get you, let's get you wired up. All right. Say hello to everybody in Radio Land. Hello, everybody on Radio Land. Hey, we got the aspect right this time. Yeah, well, see, Chief mm -hmm. actually is doing the same thing we do on Chief Talk every Thursday. Right. And so he's producing. He's doing he's his producing. job. This is exactly how this is exactly how it works. It comes up on the phone and nice and of him so, to do his job. Yeah, right. <laughs> Just a day late. He's all right. He's he's okay. Uh, you know, you know can't get good help these days. He's over there hanging out. Speaking and a good help. I was here 20 minutes ago, 14 minutes and 58 seconds. I didn't get a text. 
I told you I'd be down here in 20, 20 minutes. You said 20 to 30 minutes. It's been 45. I didn't want to be I down here. Time. I didn't want to be here, you know, hanging out with the riffraff with you not here, getting stuck talking to them. Now, are you smoking or not, or are you burnt out? Uh, I mean, I can smoke something, but, I, you know, I'm just kind of hanging right now. What do you got here? That's the Angel Quay stuff. Okay. By um, um, J.C. Newman. Oh, very nice. Um, fantastic cigar. We're going to talk about how I got that cigar oh. a little while later because we're, we're kind of going through going through our day. Going through the day? Going through the day. Perfect. And so we talked about going through the um, – now, I'll tell you what. This is just me. Yeah. I'm what listening. I do is – because I can never light that right. Yeah. I burn it. So I cut it. I have an inch off that thing, yeah, so it looks like a regular cigar. Yeah. And then I cut the cap off, and and then I go that route. Doesn't matter if I cut the cap off. Or not. Bubba, you do it your way. <laughs> it's your cigar. You do you. You do you. Right. But um, that was a, that was a neat experience getting that cigar. By the way, that I'm was, sure. that was fun. Um, so I just talked about going into the um the floor and seeing all the work going on. All oh. these. This, it's like a, it's they're crazy. building a whole city. It's no, insane. it really is. And now, you know they do this like every second or third day. It's crazy because after the cigar guys leave, the furniture guys will be here, or whoever, and it's just constant. I mean, I'm I'm always super impressed. Now there was one kid at the Oliva booth, and the Oliva booth is shaped kind of funny, but it's real mm-hmm. big, and it's um, black two by fours with paneling right. and cork on the right. side. And where the screws were for the black two by fours, there was this kid. I'm gonna be honest. Couldn't have been 20 years old. Had long, longest, greasy, messed up hair. Right. So did he work for Oliva? Or he's no, just... he was one of the one of the event people. Okay. He was one of the union people. I guess. Okay. Yeah. And so he was sitting there, totally unmotivated. <laughs> totally unmotivated. And here's me being the old man that I am. Mm-hmm. He had a three inch paintbrush mm-hmm. holding the bucket and the whole thing was black but where the screw holes were they were you could see the screws he didn't paint over the screws and so he's sitting he there painting finish. he's sitting there painting over the screws yeah a minute and a half goes by and he's still painting over the screws and he's kind of dabbing at it and i looked at his brush this is how grumpy old man i am i looked at his brush and the bristles are completely full of paint with a swell all the way up into the oh, yeah. right and i'm sitting there going Really, you can't you can't keep that brush dry. You're just putting it. He's getting paid by the hour. I wanted to walk up to him. I really want to walk up to him and say, "Give me that dang brush." I wanted to start. No, painting that's that a union. Uh, I want to start painting that booth. I that's did a because union issue. because I was just it was cra- and it's crazy. Forklifts are everywhere. Crates mm-hmm. are everywhere. I never I You're never surprised. seen that. Um, and and I'm gonna be amazed that when we win tomorrow. It's going to look like it's been there for a while. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's going to be so substantially sized. And, I mean, the tools were just crazy. You don't you don't mess with the unions here, though. <laughs> I don't know if I ever told you the story, but in my prior life, uh, working at a beer company, we had a big uh, sales event here. And uh, I want to say it was at the Mandalay Bay. And, uh, you know, we finished our part. We were presenting. And someone thought it would be great to get us down to the main show of the floor now and instead of taking the regular elevator they put us all in the service elevator oh about 20 people in the service oh. elevator all right. and the elevator got stuck oh Ooh. And, and y'all just had tacos an hour before well you know we just had to sit there and uh they bring over a guy and he's like uh oh, no this has to be repaired by a guy in another union and um, this is the elevator and, up union. Yeah, it got right, a lot going right, down. Right. So you have to have the elevator so down there. there. And uh, you know, we actually had one guy who had been smuggled out of Iran in a box. Are you serious? I'm dead serious. And this guy, he was not happy about <laughs> being in this confined space with yeah, 20 PTSD other people. Going on, oh right? yeah, no, it was bad. It was bad. And but thankfully he was there because he started like really getting upset, which made everybody move. Which made the other guy say, "You know what? Now it's a health, a safety concern." And he he just pressed some button and it got everything back and going. Wow! But um, yeah, you don't you don't mess with them out 
game because no. they are they are serious. I did notice that some of the mm-hmm. of the of the booths, my father was one of them. They had all the chairs facing like you were in school yeah. at tables, and they had it looked like all their reps. I'm I'm gonna believe they're all their reps. Yeah. And all their reps are sitting there at tables, and they have books, and they are, they are basically giving them class on how to prepare and how to do. Yeah. Um, I had never thought about that, and there was a half a dozen companies doing that. Right. Um, most of the companies are very, very small, um, and so they don't, they didn't have that whole experience. Yeah. I mean, like when that, we but. when we used to do Drew Estate, they would they would go over all that information before you got to the show. And then you get to the show and, you know, they would kind of go over if, any, if there were any changes and then they hit the hot topics. But they, I don't remember them doing it on the floor. I just think, you know, if you now look, let's go out to dinner. We'll do it. Well, dinner, no, right? not at a dinner, but they would rent a room. Um, and, you know, obviously that costs money. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think if you're doing it on the floor, there'd just be so much going on. It'd be tough for people to pay attention. Well, the My Father's Booth. Yeah, it is huge. Oh yeah, no, it's huge. That yeah. thing, that thing, you can have a family of seven in that. In I think, that booth. I think the smart companies are doing that. Even, even if you've already explained this to everybody leading up to the show, I mean, you got to make sure that everyone has as the deals because the deals can get complicated. Right. You know, some companies, it's you got to buy this and then you buy this and then you get another kicker. Right. Or if I, you know, right. so. I, I don't blame them. You know, you gotta, you gotta have it. And, and again, as I always say, this is a work trip. You only got one shot, right? <laughs> right. You gotta, you right. gotta capitalize on this because, like, I remember it was. I'm not gonna say who. A certain manufacturer mm-hmm. uh, was talking two or three years ago on Facebook, and they said just to have them hook up a wire mm-hmm. and flip a breaker cost three thousand dollars oh, yeah. and just to have a forklift pick up their their pallets and take them out were another two or three thousand yeah. dollars and to bring them back in was the same price and they didn't do a good job and they didn't bring the stuff when they're supposed to and they brought the wrong stuff and this and that. i remember it was a tirade yeah um and so i'm sitting there going they well, that, gotta that's spend when it was a ton of money. right this was two or three this was this was three or four years ago this yeah, is when so. drew estate was still so, but it wasn't yeah. Drew Estate. It was, yeah, so it was, it was at company. the Venetian, probably. And then Venetian, I remember some of the bills that they would tell us, like, okay, and I don't want to say what and get someone in trouble, but, like, in order to do this, it's going to cost this amount of money. And, you know, I mean, I'm a cheap guy. <laughs> and I mean, it was just eye-watering, the cost of some of this stuff. I mean, Vegas is an expensive city. Right. You know, and, and they and got that's you. why you got to find, and yeah, you can't, you can't bring in your own guys, exactly. you know, you exactly. got to use their people, and you can't bring in your own lunch. So, what? No, nope. well, at least this is the way it used to be. You, as a company, um, it probably will be different over here because we, we did bring in lunch at TPE, but um, back at the Venetian, you had to buy if from the them. company had to buy the lunches from the Venetian. And I won't say what it cost because it was outrageous. Um, but, you know, it, people could leave the show and go get Boy, something and then bring it back in to the show. But they couldn't buy something for it. Yeah, like the they company couldn't go to couldn't, Subway and get a six right, sub. The company couldn't, like, buy. It. And, um, you know, it was eye watering some of the expenses. That's right. Right. But that's, that's why they moved um, PCA. To the convention uh, center. I think smartly moved it to the convention center. And next year. And next year in New Orleans. Home of right. the greatest food in North America. Absolutely. Absolutely right. Can't wait. That boudin is, is straight from heaven. I love mm-hmm. boudin. So <clears throat> you got your you got your you got your badges. I talked about getting your badges, mm-hmm. how fast it was, right? For some people. I talked about the different the different badges for different people right. so that the so that the reps could understand who they were talking to. Right. right? Um, and I also talked about as and you don't know this, Cigar Media, we got a uh, an agreement mm-hmm. from PCA this year. Uh, this year was the first year that PCA didn't charge us to have memberships, mm-hmm. right, which saves us $500 because we smart. really don't have litigation. They don't come to, you know, we don't yeah. get any of the benefits from, from the PCA membership. Well, they should have done that years ago. But You're you promoting their event. Right. 
but you can't ask for cigars. Mm-hmm. You can't um, ask for, um, hey, I like I like for you to sponsor us for this or sponsor us for right. that. You can't do any of that. Right. Um, you can't um, get in people's way. Right. And there was some other thing that you can't do as well. Um, there are all sorts of, of rules, and you know what? I appreciate that. Absolutely. Because there are some there are some people that there's a small fraction of media that aren't media. Right. They have a YouTube or Instagram thing and they're they they don't take it seriously. Right. They they do a little bit of this and that and they think it's fun. They're gonna come to PCA and take a couple of videos and they're they're gonna get lots of cigars, they're not gonna do any reviews. Right. Uh, which makes the rest of us look bad. It used to be three, four, five years ago that none of the manufacturers would even pay attention to somebody who had a YouTube channel. Yeah. Because unless you were doing, unless you had a website, and unless you're doing written reviews, they didn't pay attention to it. Right. Because so many people were just, hey, send me cigars and I'll do a review. Absolutely. Uh, Steve Saka has said a number of times publicly on Facebook that he will get, Yvonne and Cindy will get 100 a day. Oh. Hey, yeah. send me cigars, I'm, a, I'm an influencer. Yeah. Right? And it's just it's just overwhelming for them. I mean, so at the at the Dortmund trade show, the, the problem at Dortmund is the barrier to entry is so low. So I want to say, you know, you can get in for like 20 euros. And so you have people. It's only about 30 bucks. Right. And you have people that go in and they will just. And it's not just cigars. It's all you know, it's pretty much all tobacco except cigarettes. And they will just go around and they'll get free samples, you know. And and that paid for their trip. And that's and, all. Um, you know, I I still have one guy I can picture in my head, and he's there every year, and he makes three laps, <laughs> all the cigar guys, and then he's like, oh, you know, no no English, no English, you know, mm, smoke smoke, and. You know, you just give them a cigar, just to go to my head walk there. away, yeah. right? Or the other ones are the guys who come up and say, "Hey, I, I have my own blend, and I think it'd be great if your company would uh, would uh, you know distribute my brand." And you're just like, "Yeah, no, that's not going to happen." Yeah, that's a good idea. The the worst one was, um, you know, the one the one thing I always told my boss is, "I'm never going to Russia." I'm, you know. Even before the Ukraine thing, you hear the stories of Americans going to Russia, and you got to leave your passport at the hotel, and then someone comes and takes a, uh, a copy of your passport, and I'm just like, I'm not dealing with that, you know, no chance. And uh, so uh, one of my salesmen, you know, kind of know that, and uh, he brought over these two Russian guys, and then these guys were huge, right? You know, right out of a movie. And what they wanted to do was they wanted us to provide them with our cigars that then they would turn into shisha tobacco, Drew Estate shisha tobacco. So they would shred your cigars right. for Absolutely. shisha. And, uh, you know, this was the greatest idea, and uh, both companies were just going to make a ton of money. And I couldn't get out of there fast enough. And the whole time, my sales guy is over on the side just laughing. <laughs> That's he knows he's gotten me. When we were, we got a chance to go to the Ukraine, mm-hmm. or we got a chance to go to Romania. Mm-hmm. And um, this was, God, Stephen was really small. Um, and we went over. And so we we crossed over mm-hmm. into right towards the Ukraine border. And right. you could see the old the old walls where the machine guns were and everything yeah. else. And they told us, they said, don't look at the guard when he comes on. Yeah. Now, I was smart enough to, number one, um, I took copies of my passports and left them home with my mom. Yeah. But I also took copies of passports and I put them in each one of our bags. Absolutely. Take them in our bags. And because they take your passports. Yeah. And they look at you with your passports and they say, don't look at them. Right. And me being me, I'm just, I look at them and smile. <laughs> right. <clears throat> but then it got worse because we went, we were on a mission trip. Yeah. And we went into their prison. Mm-hmm. And they take your passport. Mm-hmm. And all your identification, and then they put you in there and they lock the gate. Yeah, and and the guy the guy that was with us says, "Now you understand that they don't have to let us out, right?" right. And I'm like, "You did what? <laughs> you couldn't have told me that before." Before, the gate closed? yeah, no, you no, know? no, 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 no. 
um, it was, it was, it was a. Uh, I pretty I, much any country that's going to take your passport. I'm not going. I valued America a whole lot more in yeah. my freedom. No, I fought. I mean, there's just no reason. So it's you crazy. can photocopy it. You can, you know, look at it when I enter your country. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, that's part of the deal. But if you have to take my passport for any reason, yeah, I'm not going there. No, I hear you. I hear you. It was it was scary every time we went right. through any of the checkpoints. My wife would go first, yeah. then the two kids, and then I would come behind. Right. There was no way we'd either let the kids be in front of us or behind us. And then they stop, and then we've got our kids on the other side that we're not yeah. on. Right. I mean, you have to be aware and wise. But we're talking PCA, yeah. not not. Yeah, what are we talking about here? So after we got that, it was, it was 1030, mm-hmm. and at 12 o'clock, they opened up for the the meetings and the um, seminars and everything else. And so when we got to the seminar, you were busy doing other things. Yeah. We got the seminar this year. It was nice big round tables. They mm-hmm. had sodas, Snicker bars, and M&M's. Free sodas. You didn't tell me about the free sodas. sodas. Snicker bars and M&M's. They had Pepsi's coffee. Or Cokes. They had Pepsi. Mm-hmm. I got that Pepsi. And they they gave us um, a couple cigars. Or they gave us a cigar and they had popcorn. Yeah. Because we were, we were watching the release of the hand rolled video. Oh, nice. Which is really interesting. I've never seen it in the hand rolled series, mm-hmm. but it was about uh, Pete Johnson and Pippin Garcia. Yeah. Uh, amazing video, 45 minutes. But by the time when I when it was all over, I looked at my phone and I'm like, that was 45 minutes. Mm-hmm. Right. And then they give you a 10 minute pee break. <laughs> and then you come back. Old style intermission. Right. You, you come back, you don't smoke that cigar. Right. Yeah. And, um, now I'm sitting around. <clears throat> all the Deadly Breakfast Club and um, George and them from Come Smoke With Us, George and his two yeah. sons, right? So we're sitting around having a good time and there's probably $10,000 worth of cameras on the table. And so every time we get a cigar, all these all these cigar guys, all these photographers are laying down the cigars. It was hilarious. You know? but they didn't have lights because it was dark in there. Right. So one of the guys in the Republican debauchery group, mm-hmm. they actually took their cell phone Mm-hmm. And they were using the flashlight yeah. on the cell phone. It was too shiny. Yeah. They grabbed a the napkin. Right they grabbed a napkin the and they made a filter. Yeah. I was like, all right, I just need to hang around these people so I can learn right. more about this. That's red nakedness if if I've ever seen it, right? That's that's um country engineer. I think that's field experience. It worked good. And so they did that, and then we had our next thing, which was um they brought out a cigar, La Aurora. Yeah. Brought out a cigar, which is a great cigar, a medium, a medium to full. But they had some of their La Aurora rum, Ooh. which was a dark amber, almost over amber, like Jurassic right. Park in the beginning when they drilled through oh, the yeah. mosquito. That color amber, <laughs> right? You know what I'm talking about, that, I know right? Exactly. Right? <laughs> I mean, I I'm giving exactly you a word picture, right? About. So it was that color amber, and it had legs. For days mm-hmm. so when you held the glass up if you don't know what legs are when you hold the glass and you tilt it sideways the oil in the t- in the in the, the whiskey or the alcohol or whatever it stays and it just slowly hangs down and those are called legs and if you have an alcohol that's got that it's got a high oil content oil is where your flavor is and so the more oil you have the more and this was a flavorful um bourbon now or right. rum the thing that messed me up is they gave it to us before the thing started yeah. and they only gave us a, 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 a right and so i'm sitting there i light up my cigar i smoke my cigar i'm drinking and and i have nothing but an in the bottom of it. i gotta tell you i'm gonna be honest i was alive at the deadly breakfast club and so i'm show that i'm i'm worthy of table right and so i'm gonna be fancy what are you talking and, and please Please These say, photographer extraordinaire yeah, people. You, I mean, you BTCG. Yeah, but see, they're not YouTube creators. Oh, they on. are they are photographers and videographers. So I'm trying to be in their world. You're too humble, Bob. Nah. You're too humble. So I took the little the little cocktail napkin yeah. with the La Aurora thing on it. Right. And I set it down. Yeah. I took my little cup when it was still full. Yeah. And I lit up my cigar when it was burnt back up a half an inch. And I got a big old puff of yeah. huge full mouth of smoke. And I blew it into my cup. Yeah. And I set my cigar down. And I took a picture of it with the smoke coming out. Oh, of the very, 
problem was my my Apple iPhone does yeah. not do what their cameras do, so it was blurry because it was too dang dark. But I tried. <laughs> So we're sitting there, and I've got hardly anything left, and everybody else there pretty much has got hardly anything left. Yeah. And the guy comes, and he says, "Okay, this is how we're going to cigar or drink the, the rum. Too Hold late. up your rum, and we're going to." Too late. Saying, what the heck? Come on. Too late. I got to announce that ahead I'm of time. I'm looking for the guy. I'm like, hey, I need another. I didn't get any. You need another. Right? And um, so we we worked through that, but it was very interesting because he talked about. For flavors and the pairing which is really educational but then he talked about the tobacco in the cigar and how it was rolled and he gave a little bit of history which was interesting but he also got into the technical part so right. if you're a geek you really got fed mm-hmm. if you are a guy that just you know the nuts and bolts of how a cigar right you got that and if you were a history buff you got that all the way it was really really good but the next the next seminar mm-hmm. was the one that was amazing. Nick Miller from Foundation oh, Cigars okay. came out. They ran out of Maduro. But luckily, um, George from mm-hmm. Come Smoke With Us, um, Come Sit and Smoke you know, in Miami, he knew the guy that was giving out cigars and he grabbed him, was talking to him. And so the guy, he wasn't working our table. He gave him cigars and, and he's like, and George is like, yeah. He needs a cigar too, so he grabbed a cigar and handed it to me. And sadly, it didn't work right. So Chief didn't get me. Uh, well, to get my, you know, they took care of the VIP. And sad mouth, and I'm sitting here smoking my cigar. Right? But went from talking about tobacco found from 14,000 years ago. Then he talked about, which is really interesting to me because I'm a nerd when it comes to He talked about the Ice Age. And he had these pictures of, of which the new charter wrote um, is named after his grandfather. Mm-hmm. And he talked about the history with his grandfather and this and that. He talked about the Connecticut River Valley and, and the history of tobacco back then. And he talked about this tobacco rustica, which is the original tobacco plants that it has 10 times the amount of nicotine. And if you try to smoke it, you would die. Yeah. Um, and then it goes into the uh, tobacco nicotine or nicotina tobacco, which is the new tobacco that we have now. But he had pictures, so you can see the differences, which is really neat. He got into the Cuban seed. He got into the broadleaf. He got into the to the uh, Connecticut shade. Right. Um, but then he talked about the ice age and how wow. the glacier actually dug a hole and made whatever that river is right there, which is the Connecticut River Valley, which yeah. gave them sandy soil because when the ice pulled back it turned it it turned up the stone so much it made a sandy loamy soil and how that soil is so fertile for the the broadleaf and animals it's very very interesting why aren't you giving a seminar because i just <laughs> listen well when i say what other people say i've got nothing to say other than what i hear just, I mean, um, the passion. it was really really neat it was it was a neat class mm-hmm. and then he opened it for questions some people asked some really good questions, um, and it was it was well received. I really enjoyed that. Okay. Then there was this was three o'clock, and then there was the PCA annual meeting, mm-hmm. and then there was um, the a couple more. No, there were a couple more classes, mm-hmm. and then the party was at five o'clock. Right. Well, after Nick Melilla was done, Stephen goes, "Man, I'm hungry." And I'm, I'm kind of feeling hungry too. Yeah. And he's like, I really don't want to, you know, we got to iron our clothes for the, for the later party, which I'll talk about in just a minute, uh, for the later party. And so, you know, do you really want to stay for all this stuff? And yeah. at this point, I had fidgeted in my chair so much because my butt was starting to get sore. Get pictures for you today. Full. Um, I was going to say, who's coming on? And so we, um, we left. Yeah. We didn't stay for the rest of it. Right. We went to In and Out Hamburgers. Oh, nice. And got and got a ham, a couple hamburgers. Think? What do you think? About I, you know what? Stephen got the one with with tomatoes and lettuce and all yeah. the other stuff. We got the the big one with two with two burgers. Yeah. I like the 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 hard char on it. It was nice. I got mine with no lettuce, no tomatoes because I didn't want to spill on my shirt. Right. By the way, we came back. Late. Yeah. Right. I feel I feel bad. Yeah. We came back late. 
And so I pulled off my pretty clothes, right? Put on my Bob Scott guy clothes, but I forgot in such a hurry yeah. that I was supposed to wear a shirt under here with sleeves. So I was not planning on being hillbilly Bob in Las Vegas. I just, I just, and I didn't have time. Steven goes, you're on in six minutes. And I didn't yeah. have time to go get my shirt. So, um, I like it now. It's kind of overrated. It's good. Like I'd rather have water burger, Shake Shack. We bought, we bought four burgers. Yeah. Two drinks and a fry. Seven thousand dollars. Thirty thirty four, <laughs> thirty-five dollars. I was like, God dog. But yeah. now wait, wait, one fry? One fry. Oh man. When we went to Florida, yeah. Florida Bond Smoker, yeah. We were hungry mm-hmm. before we got to the hotel and we dropped our stuff off the hotel and we went and ate at um, Five Guys. Yeah. Now we Five got, Guys is also expensive. Five we guys got, we got two burgers, two fries, and two drinks and it cost $65. From my hometown. From my hometown. In fact, before I got married, the day before I got married, uh, all my groomsmen, we went to the original Five Guys. And um, they are expensive. And with the pandemic, they've gotten even more expensive. It's like $65. Yeah. yeah. And, and my daughters just took us to Five Guys for my grandson's birthday. Right. And we all went. And I got fries. And I understand you get fries and you throw them in the bag and right. this and that. It's great. But here's the thing. Yeah. This is the thing that gets me. Yeah. If you're going to chop your fries up like that, put the whole tater in there and you're going to punch it out, let the little pieces mm-hmm. go. I don't want 500 slivers. Use them for something else. Make potato cakes. Make latkes. Yeah. Make something. I I don't struggle because five guys... Uh, you know, like I said, it's from my hometown. And so, like, very proud when I go to Valencia, Spain, I see a Five Guys. I don't eat there because I'm in Valencia, Spain. But they have a Five Guys. Um, and you can go around the world and you see a Five Guys. But Five Guys, I do feel like they so went to expand so much and they have all these franchisees. And, I mean, they... I think the franchisees can charge whatever they want, it's and it's crazy. it's crazy expensive. It's crazy expensive. So you were still busy when we when we did the party. Yeah, well, I didn't get a call, but I wasn't invited no, no, to the party. No, 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 no. The party. party. Okay, yeah. The yeah. pre-party from five to seven o'clock. Right. Which was a ton better than last year. Oh, last year, good. the lights were on. You that's know, why I was busy. They don't. They don't. <laughs> <laughs> they don't do any decorations at all yeah. in there. But it felt like a warehouse. Mm-hmm. Um, this year, the where lights was were. It, at? Uh, it was right there, right okay. where we were. Uh, when you when you came in, you, you hung a right up behind the curtains. Okay. It was right behind the curtains on side. So it was kind of neat because it was darker. Um, tables were sparse, the high tops, right? But on one wall, in big four foot tall letters, it had um, Tatuaje cigars or Peanut House yeah. Johnson or something. And it was big, huge, illuminated letters, which was really cool. It lit up the room. And in each corner, they had a charcuterie thing. Ooh, they nice. had um, a uh, nacho bar. And then there were liquor stations, open open bar all over the place. Uh, I got myself um, two fingers of, of some bourbon and on the rocks. And I got to tell you, I didn't finish it because that was some of the jankiest bourbon I've ever had. <laughs> I, I, it was not mixed, top shelf. It was Mr. Crystal Drain, though. I not, think not, that stuff not top was shelf. just. Oh, it right. was it was hotter than hot. It just oh. not not that's, nice. Not that's nice. That's worse than a hot bourbon. So I just I just ended up. We stayed there for about half an hour. I got to yeah. meet. I got to I got to re meet some of my um, friends that have done um, do reviews. Yeah. Uh, uh, dads who smoke cigars. Uh, Tim's a great guy. Cigar cigar mechanic, um, great fella. Um, another Daniel Ravinelli, which is a real, real neat feller. Um, and they do reviews. Yeah. Um, so we got the chit chat with them. Deadly Crafty's Club's running around taking pictures. I got to see Juan Cancel from Protocol Cigars. And it, it's exciting to me when I get to see somebody that I just have such a high, a high um, aspiration for. I really, really like that person. When, when I, I go, know what I feel like. Yeah. I'm, I'm with you. And so, and so I walked up to him, and I'm gonna stick out my hand, and and my badge was turned sideways or upside down, 
and he goes, Bob, how are you? And I'm just sitting there going, oh, man. it's a validation Bob. winning, you right? It, um, so I got to see Juan Canceling, and I got to run into some other people that I really, really get to enjoy seeing. Yeah. It's kind of like a family reunion Absolutely. Uh, at, at some point. But we stayed, we stayed there for a good 30, 45 minutes, and it was supposed to go till 7, but we still had to go to our next event. Right. So this is what I'm excited to hear about. Oh, it was, we drove the truck over. This yeah. is the first time we've ever been inv- invited to a cigar media event. J.C. Newman invited us to be a part of the cigar media uh, party. Mm-hmm. Right. And where was this at? This was at Resort World. Oh, very on nice. On some, some. David, what's the name of that that terrace thing we were on tonight? It's not important. Oh, it was a fancy name, though. Terraz sure. on the Palazzo or yeah. Fajugi on the Badugi. It was, it was. <laughs> I think it was the latter. The Fajugi on the Badugi. I think it was right? the latter. But it was it's really. Tight. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> um, it was, it was really cool because it was really laid back. They, 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 they greeted us. And I saw the youngest Newman. Yeah. And he, he said, hey, to us. When we were going into the place, uh, all the Dunbarton people were there. Mm-hmm. Except we didn't see Saki. We saw everybody else. So we talked with them, hung out a little bit. Um, Dave Lafferty was there. My man. Uh, right? My so, man. So we had a good time with Dave. Um, and then we went in, and it was top shelf. It was amazing. They had a small table with a half a dozen um, cigars. They had the... So not um, warm. Huh? Not warm bourbon again? Not warm bourbon. Um, but they had, um, uh, what was it? They had the Angel Cuesta. Mm-hmm. They had the J.C. Newman. Mm-hmm. They had a Perla Del Mar. Mm-hmm. They had, they didn't have the El Baton, which I was surprised. And then they had the Diamond Crown uh, Connecticut Shade. Mm-hmm. Right, so that shade. And you could, I actually got to pull the first cigar out of the box. I, I smoked, I smoked three, um, uh, <laughs> Um, uh, Julius Caesars. Oh, right? I love the Caesar. And here's the thing, I got I got the Angel Cuesta. I'm smoking the Angel mm-hmm. Cuesta, mm-hmm. but I'm gonna be honest. Can I be honest? Yeah, absolutely. Be honest? All right. This we're is a, this is a eight, this is an eighteen dollar cigar. Yeah. The Perla del Mar, which is a great cigar, great cigar. Perla del Mar, I think it was Corojo. It's about an eight dollar cigar. The Diamond Crown, uh, Connecticut, is about a twelve dollar cigar. But the J.C. Newman, um, Julius Caesar. Mm-hmm. Named after J.C. Julius right. Caesar, um, Newman, uh, it's a thirty dollars cigar. Right. I smoke ninety dollars worth of cigars. That's very nice. Right. I mean, if you give me a chance to have yeah. great stuff or good stuff, yeah. I'm going to take great stuff every time. Right. And so we sat on these neat couches. They had little fire pits going on. They had these neat little lights all over the tables. I took some fancy pictures, mm-hmm. and you could see there were bushes. We were up two floors but it was a big balcony kind of thing and we were we you could see vegas but there were bushes outside so nobody could see us we could see them i felt very, very nice i felt very affluent uh, yeah i felt very high of fire nice. day. right and so we were we were hanging out this there rich hang out. Oh, it was nice <laughs> and it got better because everybody all the all the all the attendants i'm not mm-hmm. gonna say workers all the attendants were wearing uh very nice uh, black and white the vests, men were the vests the black pants and the white shirt and looking really fancy. They're walking around with little trays and they come up to you and they say, uh, would you like something to drink? Mm-hmm. And I say, absolutely. absolutely. And I say, what have you got? And they start thinking, and I looked over to the bar and what did I see? I saw a handle, a liter and a half of Buffalo Trace. Ooh. Now Buffalo Trace is, is that's, 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 that's a quick grab, right? And I didn't even worry about anything else. Mm-hmm. And I said, uh, "Can I get, can I get a double of Buffalo Trace on the rocks?" And they said, "Absolutely." He comes back with this neat little silver tray, yeah. and he's got my Buffalo Trace in a crystal rocks glass. Oh, it's nice. Not one of the ones that are molded glass. No. It's the ones where it's cut and chiseled out glass. I'm feeling fancy. Did you put that in your back pocket? No, I did not. I did not. mistake. But then. <laughs> Then and and it's it's really laid back. Yeah, where everybody's just parked. There's probably about 75, 75 people there. Mm-hmm. There's some tables on one side, and people are sitting at regular tables, but we're sitting around the couches and just yeah. chilling out and um, <clears throat> having a good time talking to everybody. Uh, I got to see um, Cigar Coop. 
I got to see the guys from um, Cigar Federation, which I haven't seen in a long time. I got to see Boston Jimmy and talk with him for a while. Yeah. Um, Cigar Prop was there. Um, and a bunch of other people that I didn't know were there. But they knew you. Because <laughs> oh. you're the amazing no. Bob the Cigar guy. No, I'm, I'm the biggest was, waste of How time big was the trip. line? Did like, the chief have to do security and like keep people from I'll like, tell you overwhelming what, you? Chief is doing such a good job being a handler because anytime oh, he sees man. somebody, yeah. he goes, hey, you're adventure or whatever and they yeah. go yeah and he goes i'm chief and they're like hey how you doing and then i just kind of see he does all the hard work yeah. on this only in vegas mm -hmm. he does all the hard work because he's <laughs> listening he does all the hard work and so then i just kind of come up and smile and, and shake hands with him that's right, right. And, and you know wow. that's i'm the talent i mean that's what happens with the president right right but Sometimes. they have the receiving line there's someone telling the president this person right. is pretty much and so it so works it should absolutely be this way it works i yeah. like it i like it a lot but as we're sitting there talking this lady comes around and a couple other guys Whoa. come around with these little trays yeah the first tray were these puff pastries mm -hmm. with shredded parmesan cheese halfway melted on them with a piece of prosciutto ham oh, stuck nice. on the inside yeah. now I'm going to tell you, my country self, mm -hmm. it was nothing but a fancy ham hot pocket, but it was so good. Yeah. And so every time they came around, that's what I grabbed. Now, where did you position yourself? Did you do what Mac Berkson would do and figure out where they're coming out with the past apps and then position yourself right by a table right there? I did not. That's what a I mistake. Did, that's see, a mistake. What I did was I positioned myself mm -hmm. at a chair that I could get up, a, a couch that I could get up out of because mm -hmm. they were low and I have a hard time getting up mm -hmm. on low couches, but also a table and an ashtray right there. So I don't have yeah. to get up. I don't have to do the reach for the ashtray. I don't have to put my, I don't have to hold That's my decent. drink the whole time. I'm right? telling you, Bob, you got to figure out where they're coming in and out of. Right? That makes sense. And then you get the closest <laughs> table there. And then that way you make sure you get every pass app. That, that makes out. sense. Right. And like if it's a good one and they weren't able to give them all out, then you can kind of clean up you that, get the rest that plate. Of the rest of the plate. You know. So that wasn't the only app. Uh, they brought I hope out. It wouldn't be the only they brought app. out. That would be embarrassing. They brought out some deviled eggs. Okay. Right. Which I didn't get any deviled eggs because I'm sitting there yeah. going, that doesn't work well with cigars. No. Right. But the way they did the deviled eggs, my mm -hmm. wife does amazing deviled eggs. Mm -hmm. You boil the egg and you you lay it flat and you cut it in half, and you right. gut it and you fill it. Right. What they did was they held the egg upright and they cut it this way. So it's these little bitty cups, and I think they cut the bottom off of them so they sit flat. Yeah. That was fancy. That is fancy. I heard it was good, but I didn't have that. But then. Yeah, I would, I'd pass it. Though. But then they came around with they these. They have a little, bacon wrap scallop. No. But they did have these little uh, tender, 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 delicious steak kebabs. Oh, very nice. Oh, they were good. And the skewer was small enough. That you could kind of bite four of them and mm -hmm. kind of pull sideways, and then take another bite and pull sideways, <laughs> right? Um, but the last ones they came out with, they put these little microgreens on them. Yeah. So I, I walked out into the parking lot wearing microgreens in the cuff of my yeah. pants, right? Yeah. Because um, I don't need no vegetables. The the cow ate enough vegetables that I don't have to worry about it. Right. But they were delicious. And then they came around with these shrimp on skewers that had been kissed with a lime. Oh, it was nice. It was delicious. And then they came around with cannolis, which yeah. I didn't have a cannoli because I don't see eating a cannoli and smoking a cigar just doesn't seem to mesh. Well, I would have had a cannoli. Stephen had you a cannoli. You can power through. Stephen had two or three of them. Yeah. But I had. Well, he's a growing boy. I had four or five skewers of yeah. steak and three or four skewers of the. And I had a couple hot pockets. Yeah. Right? And so I See, was if you good. had been where they were coming in and out of, you probably could have doubled that number. Well, yeah, but the problem was I'd already filled up my belly with three doubles of Buffalo Trace. Because I worked it pretty hard. I was not driving. You don't have separate stomachs like I do. You have the alcohol <laughs> stomach and then you have the food stomach. And these things, like, you know. No, I don't. Okay. I don't. But uh, I, I... Are you still full from the in and out? Is that why? I ate in and out at 3 o'clock. 
I just, I just, it was, it was nice. Yeah. And being a big guy. Yeah. If you grab all the food before everybody else, and like, oh, he's going to eat all the food. And that's just irritating. Well, I know that's it why you got to be right by the no, thing. So that's people fair. don't even see that you're doing it because they're all sitting there talking. Meanwhile, you're crushing it. But I got to talk to Bobby Newman. No, I got to talk to the, the youngest Newman. And, um, Drew? Drew. And he was, he was, last year at PCA, they released their Lego El Reloj, mm-hmm. which is their factory, the clock tower. Mm-hmm. Did Legos. Yeah. And I told him that, you know, I used to do Legos when I was a kid, but my son, mm-hmm. he loved Legos. Now he's doing Legos with his son. Mm-hmm. Is there any way that I can, I can purchase one of these because they weren't for sale yet? Right. He goes, I've got your information. I'll send you. Mm-hmm. And. And as amazing as Drew is, not only did, because I never asked him again. Yeah. Not only did he send me one, but he left a nice handwritten note mm-hmm. on amazing cardstock stationery. He really took time. Mm-hmm. And his penmanship is ex- <laughs> exceptional. <laughs> right? And I was I was moved. I still That's have impressive. I still have that card sitting um, yeah. at my desk because it just reminds me that there are great people doing great things and being nice. <clears throat> and so I went up to him and I said, I want to thank you. I said, you probably don't remember this. I told him the story. And I said, Stephen got with his son and they put it together and he did a video. And we still have it in the shop. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we show it every once in a while. I did not talk about how Stephen got in a hurry and the window stickers he didn't put on. Right uh, what do you expect? I didn't call him out. Right? Um, but he was, he was genuinely appreciative and he said you know we've got more lego sets coming out this oh, year oh nice <clears throat> so now, you know paul made a chief minifig that's right and she still has it so is it's that in studio. is that in in with the jc newman um mm. clock tower last time separate? i saw it he had one of those at ats yeah star wars oh even better and he had he had the figure sitting on the foot of the hat perfect so and i think, it's, I think it's paul the would appreciate that no offense to J.C. Newman, but my son would appreciate that more than that. So he did that. And then when we left, um, of course, they still have a box of cigar, boxes mm-hmm. of cigars there. And I'm like, I'm going to grab me a cigar. Mm-hmm. And so Stephen is talking with with the lady that is in charge of media there, yeah. um, Kelsey. Uh, and he's talking to her and this and that. And I grabbed a cigar and we were talking about something. And I said, yeah, I said. Um, just to let you know, I'm going home tonight, or I'm going to the to the house tonight, and I'm going to do a live, uh, sponsored live by Villager. By the way, if you don't have a cigar right now, you ought to get a Villager because the Villager is an amazing cigar, right? So, <clears throat> and Villager is a great cigar. Oh, Construction is a phenomenal one. They make great cigars, right? right? And they are so deep now, getting into the into the into the um, the premium cigars. Yeah. But I told her, I said, I'm going to be smoking this cigar. Uh, on on the live tonight. And she goes, well, do you need any more? Yeah. And I said, yes. And so she started, <laughs> <laughs> right? Right? Well, thank you, Kelsey, because this has been a lovely cigar. Right. And so she started to hand me a couple more cigars. Yeah. And then she goes, well, how many do you need? I said, well, four. My mind was saying, well, box. But I right. said, well, four. Yeah. And, and in saying, well, four, she grabbed, she had already given me three. She was grabbing two more to give to me. But she dropped one, uh, and Chief being Chief, being the kindness of his heart, he goes, oh, that one fell. I'll take that so you don't have to put it back on that. So, so he, he stole my fifth cigar. Humanitarian. He stole Chief my cigar. Me. What a he stole my cigar. Unbelievable. So what well, is your experience? that sounds like an amazing today? night. Uh, you know, today was just kind of a prep day. Um, you know, we got some big meetings tomorrow. Um, so just getting ready for those, um, ironing my suit, ironing my shirt, um, checking in, you know, I ate at another taco place. So, um, the one on the corner? uh, I can't even remember the name of it. L something, but it's, it's on the way to taco and beer, but then you take a left. Um, but taco and beer is better. Right on the corner? Neon Uh, because no. that's where Steven and, and, and some of the DLBCs want to go. Yeah. Um, by the way, I think Sunday yeah. we're planning on all doing breakfast at the bagel place. 
Oh uh, yeah, you gotta if go it's, early if it's open early enough. Because we gotta, we gotta, we got content to do. No, but I think you gotta be there super early. I've heard a long line from the side of the road. I'll yeah. drive over with you, and if there's a long line, I'm probably walking. They don't drive here. Uh, I don't think there is. I could be wrong. You know, because I never rent a car here. I think you're crazy. <laughs> Well, it, it has to be fair. Hand. To be fair, like I did not realize that um, at the casinos it's free parking because they want you to come in and gamble with money. So, we went. We went to freaking at the resorts world. Or what we went to eighteen dollars at the Venetian. It's free. Stephen went somewhere last night after we went to bed, mm-hmm. and um, they decided to go to Whataburger. And no, they went to In-N-Out. They're In-N-Out on Fremont like, Street. How many times is that guy going to be In-N-Out? We don't have it where we are. I know, but you know. So, and all the guys want to go, so they went to In-N-Out yeah. on Fremont Street. Yeah. Well, it's a dry, it's it's a drive through only and they want to sit deep. Mm-hmm. It doesn't even have to go to a parking garage. Yeah. And so he parked in a parking garage. Yeah. How much do you think a parking garage on Fremont Street costs? Uh, Thursday night, we'll say $25. 36 bucks. Oh, man. For two hours. Man. Eighteen dollars an hour. Well, luckily this channel is just raking six dollars every twenty minutes. <laughs> raking in the cash, three dollars so, every ten minutes. Yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy. To be fair, like I was just a in, I was just in Seattle, mm-hmm. and um, you know the parking was reasonable for it's four Seattle. Hours. There's a lot of traffic in Seattle, Bob. You don't understand. It's uh, the traffic is bad. I figured the parking would be insane, but no. It you know, <laughs> probably about four fifty an hour. Park on the street, and they all have it on an app. It was very nice. All those apps. Yeah, and you could cashless. Let's society. let's say you get stuck in the museum of pop culture. I did not see Bob the cigar guy mentioned in the museum of pop culture. Which I thought was a big miss. I bet you should have on that on stickers on their and put, part, it on, put it on, on a, their part. On a Bansky. Yeah, you could have put it on a on a yeah. uh, Warhol. But uh, if you're running late, you can just add time right there in the app. Now I will say, my son, um, when they they have a little screen that you plug in what you think is popular at that point, and uh, without any prodding of my own, my son typed in Swisher Sweets. So that was up on <laughs> that was up on the board. For about 35 seconds. I don't know how many votes we got. That's all right. Yeah. It was up there, right? Hey, it's mentioned over 400 it was rap there, songs. Right? I don't know why it wouldn't be up there. It's mentioned over 400 rap songs. I believe so, yeah. Wow. They had a Biggie Smalls um, display. I didn't see Swisher Sweets mentioned anywhere. Well, every that king was a big needs crowns. Yeah. So. And I like that cigar. It's a good cigar. It is a good cigar. I mean, you can't, you can't tell me you can find a better cigar. 70 cents. It's impossible. Good it's fishing impossible. cigar. Great fishing cigar. Good toolbox great, cigar. Great uh, yard work cigar. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Quick quick lunch break. Great first uh, first cigar of the evening. Cigar. Before you hit up the club. Or if it's cold outside. Yeah. It's cold outside. You're going to watch your reggaeton, uh, you know, go watch a band and great, great cigar for that. All right. Can't be beat. Can't be beat. <laughs> You heard it here first, folks. So, tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Tomorrow's going to be the, big day. the fun day because I'm going to do my best to seal things off of um, different people's booths. Okay. And be able to show y'all some of the stuff that you're not going to be able to see. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know what I'm going to get, um, but I'm going to try to get some stuff and we're going to have a good time with, with all that good stuff. Tomorrow's going to be hot. It's the first day is always crazy. There was only, crazy. it was very slow today. There's not many people there today, but I think it's because it's just uh, well, yeah, the it's seminars. The so, so people don't come to seminars as much. They come to do their well, business. Well, the manufacturers, they're in there. They're learning. They are, you know, doing their briefings. So, you know, I mean, you, you probably didn't, other than the manufacturers that were presenting, you probably didn't see many of them there in the seminars. Right, because they're all getting ready. ready. Yeah, Get they're all getting ready. So, you know, so, I mean, I don't know what the breakdown is between attendees and 
um, and uh, manufacturer employees or exhibitors, I should guess I should say, are, but you know, they couldn't be there. And you know, a lot of people also, I mean, Vegas is expensive. So a lot of people come in today and, uh, and uh, you know, we'll get their badge first thing tomorrow morning. Well, I can see a lot of guys coming with their wives too, and they're going to take Friday. <laughs> yeah, the wives do not want to. Uh, they're going to go Friday. So and significant all others. All we should say because we have a lot of female uh, executives. In the but do all the industry. appropriate, you know, fun yeah. things for the ladies. And then Absolutely. they'll be set free to do whatever they're going to do the rest of the week. And, yeah. and the guys will be in there smoking cigars. So, um, fun day. It was a fun day. Um, I really enjoyed the J.C. Newman thing. They, it was not what I expected. Mm-hmm. I thought they were going to release their new cigar. Smoky, whatever it's it's the old baseball team from Tampa, um, and they released they re, no it's smoking something or other, oh, okay. and they released a new a new cigar. Okay, uh, and I thought they were going to release it tonight because um, I was like, you've oh, got all these be in the show. Yes, it will be. Um, but I, I thought it was like, well, we got all this media here, so we're going to hype up one of our products and have everybody take pictures of it. Let's get a big photo dump. They actually said no. We don't need y'all to take pictures. Y'all just hang out. Yeah. And they didn't. They didn't pressure us. They didn't give us a hard time. They didn't come over and, you know, if you want to have a conversation with somebody from J.C. Newman, they would. Or from, yeah, they would. I think. But I if think not, they didn't. You do have to remember, these are hand-rolled products. And so, um, you know, a lot of times, and they're hand-rolled in other countries and then delivered here to the United States and all this stuff takes time. Mm -hmm. So I know in the past companies have announced a cigar and they have just enough to give out samples and they kind of have to divvy them out. So you might not Uh, have bundles for everybody. Yeah, maybe. Maybe that was it. Or maybe not. Maybe that's their strategy. I don't know. Now, I did see on my emails today, which I've been getting so many PCA emails every day, that a couple people are going to release their new cigar Sunday. They're not going to release it tomorrow. They're going to release it Sunday, like at four o'clock. Yeah. Or Sunday at twelve o'clock. Yeah. Um, and there's a company that's doing something for Women's Day, um, Monday. Okay. And if you go there Monday, the first twenty-five women to go up there get a uh, cigar pack, a big, a big gift pack. And um, they get their name entered into a drawing to get all sorts of facial creams and stuff like this. So, um, but that's going to be Monday. All right, hear me out. I'm listening. You put Chief in a dress. I'm not going to be here Monday. Oh, I'm not going to be here Monday. Man. He'd be a handsome one. <laughs> with the beard and everything. With Tall. the beard and the man. Tall. Yeah. Tall. Well, you can't ask. You can't ask that question. Why, why does that woman have a beer? <laughs> why would you say she's that? Not a lot to ask that she's, so. she's, she's from yeah. the European block. Right. So yeah. block, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, as this train has just fallen off the rails. <laughs> what uh, are you talking about? Is there something else you'd like to share? Um, I don't think so. I'm just excited about tomorrow. Uh, seeing, uh, like you said, it's part business. It's also part seeing friends and uh, you know especially working on the international side I, we just don't get to see a lot of our customers other than on a computer screen so uh, always nice to see them in person so uh, I mean that's always what I'm most excited about and that's a big deal other than too. seeing you because and, if uh, you went if you had to go see all your all your accounts you'd have to go to all those countries I mean, that's why you know, I come to the show. That, that would be so crazy, right? They all come to you. Yeah, and that's why we go to Dortmund. And, uh, you know, we used to go to a show in Singapore. Uh, really? Yeah, unfortunately, the it became tougher and tougher to operate in that, at that show because it wasn't a tobacco show. It was a duty-free show. And the rules are very uh, strict in Singapore. Um, so we don't go to that show anymore and it's, you know, it's a lot, although we do, I'm, I'm sorry, I should say, I don't go to that show anymore. We do send a representative, um, to that show. Um, but, uh, yeah, because you, again, 
the cost for me to fly to all these countries, I mean, you're talking Hotels six figures, and six figures, and then the, just the time, just the time, and you know, the rental cars, and then getting stuck at soccer games. And, yeah. So yeah. Um, if I can fly to Las Vegas, four hour flight to Las Vegas, and meet with ten customers here, um, you know, it, it pays for itself. And they get to come to America and go to Vegas. Right. That's their vacation. Right. Right? I, mean, I, I have uh, one customer I'm meeting tomorrow, and uh, he comes every year, and uh, he is very good at blackjack, and he usually makes all <laughs> of really? what he spent to come on this trip, plus a little extra, and he, he flies, uh, I don't want to say where he's from, um, but then he flies to New York and he buys something for his wife and then he flies home. All right. And, uh, you know, so everyone's happy. He's happy. She's happy. Um, there's a reason why the show is not in Lincoln, Nebraska. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Now so, I know there's been a lot of, a lot of speculation and complaints about PCA is always in Vegas and, and sometimes it's in Louisiana. It's going to be in New Orleans next year, but people are like, why don't they do it up in, Pennsylvania, or why don't they do it up in in Upper Upper California, yeah. or why don't they do it in Idaho, or you know, all these other the countries? It's because of the state laws, really. Yeah, I mean, I, I remember, and I don't know if they got a special dispensation, but uh, the last PCA that wasn't in Las Vegas was in New Orleans, and they had and, tobacco issues. Well, and, that, and the state legislature passed law that you could not smoke indoors anymore luckily they were able to get a special dispensation for to host that pca but then it was the ipcpr and people could smoke and then every year after that it's been been in vegas because vegas they don't care you know this is the only place where you can smoke indoors well the venetian boy if you walked if you walked out with a cigar in your mouth it was a ten thousand dollar fine and if you had on a vendor badge yeah. They would attach to the company as well. I mean, yeah. I remember there were guys standing there, put that cigar on. Right. Um, you can't even smoke right there in the entryway. Right. Um, but you could smoke in their convention hall. Whereas if you go other places, right. you can't even do that. Well, I think in Louisiana, and the reason people went away from New Orleans is because of that issue. Yeah. And I think somebody from PCA did the, did the, the census or whatever and said, hey, I just want to let you know. That because you won't let us smoke cigars here, you're losing, um, you know, eleven, twelve million dollars or whatever, Absolutely. whatever the number would be, uh, by people staying in hotels, by people in restaurants, by people doing your events, and by people at the convention center. Um, and I think they said, "Hey, stupid, we need this money. <laughs> um, you let the people smoke cigars, you just put in better vents or change your filters. I don't well, care. You know, it's just, I mean, it's three days, and everyone who's in that room is in that room." Voluntarily, so it's not, right. I mean, well, you who couldn't. You heard it. You, you couldn't know? smoke. You couldn't smoke. Was it yesterday? No, we were on the floor. You didn't go on the floor today. You didn't go on the floor today, did you? No, I wasn't allowed in the floor. We were on the floor. Yeah. And I was looking for a cigar. I was going to bum a cigar with somebody because I was going to walk around smoke a cigar. And and somebody said, "You can't smoke cigars." Yeah. I said, what do you mean I can't smoke cigars? Today. You can't smoke them today. And I said, are you kidding me? And they said, no, because all the union people were yeah. in there and it has to be a smoke-free environment for them. Yeah. And so you're at a, a, a smoking conference, convention, yeah. and you can't smoke cigars on the first day. About, about the only international show that I know of that you can smoke in the show is the Dortmund show. Wow. When I go to the UK trade show... Um, you know, they have it and it's kind of a small area and you can smoke right outside, uh, but you cannot smoke in the actual, where the show is. Wow. So, uh, you know, I'm very lucky. We got a great uh, partner over there, Tor Imports, and they get the booth that's right by the door. <laughs> you know, you can go through and, and take your order from someone, hand them a cigar and then walk them right outside the door and smoke wow. and they can sample or whatever and um i mean it's crazy we were talking with the guy this morning chet yeah and they have that that shop i forget what what state it's in and you can't smoke indoors 
because you your your cigar shop has to be a standalone building, it can't be a multi purpose building. It's a multi purpose building in Cincinnati. Yeah. And so and so what they've done is the guy No, owns, no, 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 we don't want to talk about this. I can't talk about this. I would not talk about this. <laughs> Bob, do not poke the bear. I, I just got. And his name it. was not Chet. It was. It was <laughs> Lester. It was Steve. It was Terman uh, Yeah, uh, George. Anybody but Chet, right? Look, I mean, I've been to places, and um, you know, they'll have in other countries where you cannot smoke indoors. They'll have another building right next to it, and it's a private club. And you, can, go smoke and you can do an event there. Um, you know, there are places that you can't smoke indoors. And so they have a covered uh, walkway right outside. So you can go out and smoke. Like an open gazebo. Right. Um, but at that UK trade show, if they put a tent over it, uh, you can't smoke. Wow. Because you have the tent. Even if you're outdoors. So most people go in there and get cigars. They don't get to smoke the cigar. No, because they go outside. But... Yeah, but they we don't host, get to go to the booth host and the guy hands you a cigar and you cut yeah. it up and light it up. Yeah, no, you can't do that. When we wow. host, uh, when Tor hosts the dinner, the dinner is outside. Wow. And I'm always, you know, because it, it, it tends to rain a lot in the UK. And I was like, what are we going to do if it rains? And uh, they say, the as well, then we move the food indoors and, you know, people still stay outside and smoke. Wow. So, um, and I got to tell you, the convention centers, is, the ceilings are 25 feet tall. But we were in that in that area, and and it was packed. It was it was every seat was filled, and then yeah. some, um, in the gallery as well. And you didn't smell cigar smoke no. except the smoke you were smoking. I mean, it just went up and was gone. And the yeah. ventilation was amazing. Yeah. Um, so you know, on the convention floor, I know last year, um, you couldn't smell cigar smoke. It no. wasn't like it wasn't like overwhelming or anything no. like that. So um, now there was a time because it was dark in that room, and they had these amazing. <laughs> floodlights shining onto the stage and you could look at the and you could see the light you know you could see the fog as it was lifting going out of i'm sure that was just a fog yeah that was just fog <laughs> no that was tobacco smoke just in case any government regulators listen, it was that was just a fog yeah machine. but it was way above people so it was it was, it was <laughs> well okay. they did it you know they did a poor job with the fog machine it was 15 feet up so yeah. i guess it was okay yeah. um but uh and and when you go in tomorrow, mm-hmm. as soon as you walk into the convent, or when you in the floor, if you when you hang a left, if you look up, yeah, and I want to figure out how to get up here. There's a control booth, yeah, with all glass windows, and it's suspended in midair. Ooh, I just want to go up there and just kind of, just kind of. I, I don't think they're gonna allow you up there. You know what? But you know, if there's one guy, you, who can you know it, what? You know what? Too. Yeah, it's I'm, true. What? You I didn't know I was supposed to be here. Hey, what, what do you mean? Don't speak English. Yeah. Right? Um, but they, see, Mac, Mac Berkson told me I was supposed to come up here and get some cigars for him. They were in this in this room. Can I just come in this room real quick and, and, and get some cigars, please? Right? Um, yeah, I'll throw you under the bus. I'll say Steve Saka told me, and then oh, they'll be yeah. like, oh, I ain't talking to him. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever he says, just yeah, no it's fine. Um, so we are going to end it here. And we are not going to end our night. You're probably going to go to bed because you're not really. But we're going to sit over there with the Dead Link Breakfast Club and smoke some cigars and tell some more stories. I, I'll give you at least five minutes that are not suitable for uh, the Bob Cigar Guy show. So thank you so now, much. I do for, have a dinner tomorrow night. So I might not be on tomorrow. All right. All right. Well, then I'll have to go solo. Yeah. It'll be half, half a but show. But if I can be back in time, I will be. Well, don't hurt yourself because you're not getting paid. So. I was not aware. You're not. Yeah. You're, oh wait, he got uh, it right uh, now. Of course, you don't have any money left, Chief. Spend it all on parking. <laughs> you ain't lying. In in, in and out burgers. Yeah. Um, oh, oh, thank God. I thought Chief was going to come on and say something, but I tell you what. Uh, but uh, it's it's. Remember, Villager cigars. They're your friend. Wonderful right? people. Absolutely. I'm looking forward. We're going to do an interview with them. I think tomorrow. Oh, schedule. perfect. We've got like eight people tomorrow and eight people um, Sunday. And we're not going to be here Monday, but then we'll do pop-ups. Um, we'll go around. Uh, last year, we did a pop-up with El Cupo. And yeah, that made my number three of the El, year. Yeah. 
That's a fantastic cigar. Have you had that yet? Yes. Oh yes. my gosh, yes. I love that cigar. I actually went and bought um, these little pin holders yeah. that are shaped like an octopus. Right. And I only paid five dollars for them on mm -hmm. eBay or whatever. But I'm going to take some pictures with it and have the Google cigar sitting on the octopus because um, I'm just trying to be like the Disney Records Club. Right. Right. I got. I got to try. I'll never, I'll never win, but I'll try. Um, but that's it. We're going to go. Okay. We will see you, at least I will see you, Mac may see you tomorrow. Please be here because it's going to be even more fun. Not that Mac's not here, but because I'm going to have stuff that stuff I to show. show. That's right. Stuff to show. So I'm going to go ahead and close this out, and I'm going to yell over at Chief to shut us down. So we will see you tomorrow. Bob Scarga and Mac Bergson from Vegas saying, you're awesome. Absolutely. Say bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.